Hi guys. Uh, listen, I'm going to title this, I think, uh, Trauma Number Two. But first, M. Grace has got a video. Go to her channel, M. Grace. She did a video like I asked you guys to do. So, guys, please go watch it. Um, she's got terrific vibrations and uh, she's been through a lot of tough times too. And uh, this is her first video, so let's be supportive. Uh, uh, you guys need to know that when you do videos, when I uh, feel you through the comments, I can usually find you, especially if you give me your your uh, date and where uh, your uh, where you are and how old you are. I don't need the date you were born, just uh, how old you are and what town you are in. Usually, I can scan that city and find you uh, pretty easily because you send up kind of a beacon when you type that my name is knowing that I've asked for it there's kind of this beacon that shoots up out of the town or country wherever you're from and I can find you that way but it's kind of like fuzzy and then if I uh, talk to you in emails back and forth it gets a little bit sharper if I uh, talk to you on the phone it's even a sharper yet uh, the sharpest is when you do videos or we do Skype that's the sharpest if I can see your eyes hear your voice and uh, talk to you back and forth that's when I can see your vibrations the cleanest the sharpest besides of course one-on-one -on -one in person that's of course the sharpest of all so that's one of the reasons why I want you guys to do videos there's a lot of reasons why for yourself so you can trigger your own remembering and also I want you guys to watch each other because each other will trigger remembering in yourself and you'll feel that kindred spirit um, I now have uh, Jeremy on video, uh, Seth, it's not a video to me, but Seth has his videos on his channel uh, with him dancing. I have uh, G-Man that I've talked to in live and video back and forth, and uh, uh, Grace, M. Grace have our videos and it feels like whenever it's a, a video of some kind it feels like you guys are right in the room with me so uh, it's really a lot more real to me whenever you do that and it'll be more real to you when you look at your own eyes and hear your own voice and if you watch each other's videos so everybody should have watched uh, G-Man's videos you should watch all of his videos um, you should watch Jeremy and he is playing our song because you need to learn it and uh, yeah you know what I want to do I want to get uh, Seth to choreograph something simple and I am not a big good dancer or anything but I want it to be some chore choreography that all of us can do and uh, the song that Jeremy's got that all of us can sing that and then what I'd like to do is I'd like for you guys to do videos, practicing here, doing other videos, do videos of you singing the song and doing the dance and send me all of those. And then I'll do one of those things where it's clip, 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 clip through the whole song. Wouldn't that be awesome? I think it would be awesome. I am, that is one of the things that I want to get done because, uh, yeah, it's a way for us to all you know put a piece of ourselves into this song and that dance and yeah maybe have um, North Wood playing a violin with the song and um, Dennis playing sax uh, we've got a couple of guitar players that could play well long so you could do those things with the song but add all of those people together put people's uh, artwork like flash in between people talking so we've got all the things that are you and make up you and uh, I think that would be just phenomenally great so I am putting that it on my list of of things that I would like to get done and uh, yeah or even sing it two or three songs depending times depending upon how many of us there are just keep it going I would love to take that with me on my travels so that I feel like you guys are surrounding me all the time okay now back to the point um, recently I had a conversation with someone and it came up that uh, about my trauma 
that that I had been desensitized. I had desensitized myself of these traumas over years. Okay, well, I want to make this, I want to clarify this big time. I did not desensitize myself from any trauma, ever. I did spend, oh, about 20, 25 years uh, reading books and trying to do it myself. Self-help books and I uh, went to a hypnotist. That didn't work. I uh, followed all the advice of a whole bunch of different therapies and different kinds of therapies. And I was in college, so I did take psychology, sociology, and I used anything I could come across um, in those classes and tried those. Nothing worked. Nothing worked. There was no desensitization about the trauma. Just what happened was every time I tried these things, my life got worse. Uh, the more I went to the trauma and tried to do it the way they said to do it, it just, bad things just started happening to me. Now, I know now that what I was doing was I was going into the trauma in the trauma, which they were really big about telling me to get into the trauma, which was way the wrong thing to do. And then, of course, I was vibrating this very, very bad traumas, really bad trauma. And um, a lot of them. And I would get in the trauma, and of course, I would vibrate that out to the universe. The universe would obey my command and draw. I would draw more terrible, awful things that happened to me. So from the rape, especially rape, was the easy one for me to identify as I went back. And I'll explain that in a minute. But from my uh, being raped at two on, then I just became very fearful of... Uh, men and rape so uh, that caused me to not draw the best guys into my life of course and also whenever I would go into that rape to try to become desensitized like they told me that I would do if I did it this way then all that did was um, I ended up in another rape or near rape situation so none of that worked none of it worked then I died, came back, started creating, and saw that my life was um, turning back into where it was before I died. So I went, whoa, 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 whoa. So I stopped, and you got to understand that when I came out of the coma, I couldn't take care of myself. I couldn't walk very well. Uh, I had big, for the first year, I had big lapses of memory loss uh, that I had to correct. I had to correct all of that. So. The first couple of years, I was busy trying to get my human body back working again. And like I've said before, I only had about a year of places that I could go and stay with my underage daughter uh, with no money, no job, and no history. And them saying I'd never work again, and she was really too young to work. Or she could have, but she was busy taking care of me because I couldn't take care of myself. So I had about a year there that I and before I had to go back to work and which it was of course entirely too soon under that kind of really bad um, health problem so the, uh, that's the reason why it didn't take long it, it took me about a year I was back at work within two years I think I had three to five jobs and uh, two years after that I was headed back into the coma or death so that's why I've said that I stopped that because Stephanie wanted me to stick around now, when I got my body back in shape and I realized, so this is about three years in, and I really remembered a lot of stuff, but I couldn't access that stuff while I was dealing with everything that was going on here in body. So I'd have to go back and forth and back and forth. And that was about two years, two and a half years in, that I made myself learn to meditate and that's when I escaped and I was meditating for 8, 12, 14 hours in a day and realized that that wasn't going to work either and although I felt much much better by just being over there and accessing the, the over there it really didn't help me any so then I had to figure out well, why I came back so and when I started to do that then I started to assimilate data now all of the trauma was not I wasn't, wasn't dealing with any trauma during all of this situation, all of this time, okay? 
what I did do was I came back and I realized how things are created, how my life was created, and how I was creating from here forward. And that's when I started uh, facing the trauma because I realized that all of that trauma had caused me to have a lot of belief systems consciously, subconsciously on every layer of me that was going to continue to make sure that I had a very difficult life. So I started to go back and look at the most recent uh, reason I'd, I'd find the last bad thing that happened to me. I would you know, look at it, but I would look at it objectively, like I was a third person looking at an event. Not in it, not in the trauma, but stepping outside of it, analyzing it from a very um, outside the trauma uh, sort of way. A very objective sort of way. So, in that way, I could see how things were created. I could see it how it was created in my life. And I gradually, over time, out of curiosity, not because I had to, out of curiosity, I eventually tracked back just about all the major traumas in my life. And I took a long time just to look at them and say, okay, well, this happened bad. Okay, well, I was doing this, how I was thinking, and so it kind of went trauma, scared of trauma, trauma, scared of trauma, sc trauma, scared of trauma, all the way through my whole life. That's how it backed up to being, back to the point that I was, I would say, uh, weeks old, uh, when my mother proved to be not trustworthy. So, lost trust right at the get go, about, I'd say, three to four weeks old. And then my mother pretty much handled that part of the trust. And then it went to my father at about two. And then I really, up until 18, I really believed, honest to God, I was really kind of kept in a box, in a very horrible, ugly box, and experienced a lot of um, abuse to myself and my siblings in that box and I really believed that once I got away from home that my parents were apparitions and that outside of that I would be free and that I would be around humans that were happy and healthy and wonderful and kind of believed um, TV that it was going to be like that and I really believed it but when it came to interacting with men one on one I immediately went into fear and distrust because of the rape the childhood rapes, repeated childhood rapes, and when I was around women, and my mom was very manipulative and very sneaky, so I immediately was afraid of females because of that. Of course, now I know that. But I did not desensitize myself of the traumas. I looked at the traumas objectively. That's the difference. Big difference. Huge difference. And as far as I know, I know of no therapist, but that could have changed. You might be out there. And thank you very much. So if you are helping people by telling them to objectively look at their trauma, uh, I am down for that. And I'm not saying that going into the trauma doesn't work for some people. I'm not talking to those people. If the way that society is said to deal with trauma has worked for you, or for people that it has worked for, good. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the people that it didn't work for. That's who I'm talking to. And it didn't work for me. The reason why it didn't work for me is because I didn't trust any of them. I didn't trust any of them because that lack of trust started so, so young. It was very deeply embedded in me. Okay? So the only person I trusted was me. So I trusted me to analytically look at those events and analyze them to see how they were created and how I could keep from creating them in the, per in the future. That's how I dealt with the trauma. If I go into any of the traumas from at this point in my life, I could still, um, it will not, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> it's that simple. I'm not going to do it. They're horrendous things and they are not, from my estimation or for me, they aren't, it is, they aren't traumas that I can be de desensitized over. Uh, I would think there was something horribly wrong with me if I could be desensitized over them. Uh, the events that happened, the things that happened to me, uh, nobody should be able to be desensitized to. They were horrible. 
but I can understand from the get-go, from the time I was switched into the other family, how it happened and how, as I, I as a creator God, how they did the switch, put me in a terrifying family. It didn't take much for me to start creating a horrible life and do their job for them, the bad guy's job for them, so that I was not nearly as an effective a high vibratory being as we had originally planned when I came to do this. Okay? So I want to make it quite clear that I did not desensitize myself. I am not desensitized of my traumas. I simply look at them objectively from a third person point of view and know how they were created, how, know how they started, how one led to the other. Okay? So, that's what I wanted to clarify. I have not desensitized myself from anything. And I don't ignore them. I don't play like they didn't exist. They don't exist. Because they do. Uh, they did happen. And they were horrifying and terrible. And um, I don't want it to happen to anybody. On the planets that I go to, the places that I go, they will not happen to anyone. I also understand how it was created. I understand why other beings would want to experience that experience. It is so different than us remembering who we are as creator gods. Uh, oh my gosh, couldn't be any more different of an experience. So those that want extreme difference uh, experience from the creator gods that they are, then this would be a great experience for them. I do understand I can look at those traumas from a uh, vibrational frequency sort of way and uh, which is really my objective way of looking at them and from a frequency standpoint I can also see that they're beautiful in their vibratory state as what they created for the whole but experiencing that stuff to create that vibration for the whole in the bodysuit yeah terif it's horrible horrible and although I understand that everybody has the right to do that I understand why mine snowballed oh so badly into hell I can understand why the bad guys uh, did that and do that to people in their game to try to keep the vibrations low and keep the creator gods in amnesia uh, I have not desensitized myself to the trauma and I won't ever I won't ever and all of that trauma does uh, creep back up and there are so many belief systems so many fears embedded over so much trauma over so many decades uh, that it it would take me uh, lifetimes to go through find the beliefs find the trauma get into the trauma desensitize myself to the trauma and then go on to the next one I don't have enough years don't want to have enough years to do it that way can it be done? Sure, I guess. Uh, has it been done? Probably. Uh, but it didn't work for me. And I'm talking for people that it, that way does not work for you. That you've been so traumatized that you don't trust anybody to even begin to go into an office and believe them and become desensitized. Aside from the, uh, to me, obvious fact that there are too many layers and too many traumas and it was too bad over all that time to be desensitized to the moments. Now, I have also collected all of the moments that were absolutely the moment in time when I was hurt, physically, emotionally hurt. I have said that I've actually taken and analyzed and found those moments and realized that it's just a couple hours in my whole lifetime. I do know that. And that makes it easier. That was one of the stages I got so that I could objectively follow that line. But uh, to me, objectively looking at a trauma, being able to see how it was created and where it came from, from the very beginning, and desensitizing myself, two completely different things. The fact that I don't think it's possible to de desensitize myself to those events and to ignore how this physical consciousness that is this human part of me uh, is affected by those things and will always be affected by those things um, are, are two different things. This, this body um, had those things happen to her. 
and it will affect her forever. And the other part of me will love this part of me and uh, continue to love. And I explain how it worked to this part of me. The other part of me does. And I continue to understand when this the body part of me has a knee-jerk reaction or a sudden fear based on those traumas that occurred. I can now catch them faster so that I can talk to this part of me and go, I understand, but remember, remember, so I can take her, the consciousness that is in this body and walk that part of me through and go, okay, now remember this is how this happens, but we don't want to do that anymore. So you and I, we're a team and we're going to create like this. Okay? Now hopefully that clarifies that. All right, I'm going to run out of um, space on this phone, so uh, sorry, it's kind of a downer one, but uh, I needed to clarify that big time. Okay, guys, uh, I love you guys so much. Huge hugs, and I'll talk to you later. Bye now.